Okay, it was the summer of 1968. Lyndon Johnson's Great Society was on fire. The Hispanics were rioting. The blacks were burning. The hippies were fighting the draft. 536 soldiers died that June of 1968. And the number one hit was Mrs. Robinson on, uh, on the radio. Okay, where I'm at, I'm at 3400 Wilshire Boulevard, what, what once was the Ambassador Hotel. And if you're aware of what horrible thing that happened here, right after midnight, June 5th, 1968, the 42 year old Robert Kennedy was shot behind his right ear. Even though the supposed killer, Sirhan Sirhan, was to his front, about five feet to his left. Okay, this was a working hotel until 1989, and then now they, they turned it into a middle school, Robert F. Kennedy. And that old building in front, they integrated the Coconut Grove. And that's where the glitterati of Hollywood partied in the, during the Roaring Twenties and the Depression. Anybody who was anybody, in fact, this, this, uh, this apartment building right here, the Gaylord Apartments, this is where uh, John Barrymore, the great profile, used to live. Okay, uh, before I start, I just want to say that The Graduate was filmed here in 1967, so I thought it was synchronistic, it was a weird thing that uh, the number one hit from that movie on the day that Robert Kennedy got shot was Mrs. Robinson. So there's so many interconnections in life. Okay, well, Bobby, he, uh, he went into the ballroom right after winning the California primaries for the Democratic Party against uh, Eugene McCarthy. He made his victory speech in the ballroom and they told him to take a shortcut to the press box through the kitchen. I just want to say that I was fortunate in 1984 to meet an old guy that worked there. I went in there and uh, he took me to the exact spot where, where uh, Robert Kennedy made his last speech and he took me through the pantry. So I was fortunate to see this. Too bad, 1984, there were no camcorders and if they were, they were prohibitive. Okay, uh, he, uh, he had just won the primary he did his victory speech. He made a uh, off-the-cuff speech, and uh, he was flanked by uh, Dolores Huerta, who saw uh, she she wrote a little epitaph to uh, Bobby on that wall there. She was part of the United Farm Workers. She was on his right when you see pictures of Bobby on the stage there, and uh, at least you know what. I don't, there was a lot of movie stars that wanted to preserve it, they should have, but they said it would have been, it would have been prohibitive to retrofit it, but at least they kept the coconut grove like I said there. Okay, well, uh, let me say, give you a little bit of the extemporaneous speech he said here. He was clearly tired and worn out. He said, he gave thank yous to all around, to a lot of people. He was half serious, half mocking, half playful. Then he said to his brother-in-law, Steve Smith, you're ruthless but effective. And then he told Rosie Greer, he said, uh, thanks Rosie for saying that he'd take care of anybody who didn't vote for me. And then there were laughs and cheers. And then he finished with his old exhortations. I think we can end the division the divisions in the United States, what I think is quite clear is that we can work together. We are a great country, a selfless and a compassionate country. So my thanks to all of you and on to Chicago and let's win it. And that's it. And as he walked into the, uh, the kitchen or the pantry rather, he was shot. Like I said, five people got wounded. And then the supposed killer was tackled, tackled by his bodyguards, Rayford Johnson and Rosie Greer. And I remember waking up that next morning, probably one of the saddest times of my life, especially for the whole country. And then when they, uh, when they flew him out to lay in state at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York for 24 hours, 
and then they they put them on a special train to uh take them to be buried at arlington cemetery in virginia and hundreds of thousands of people they, they played it on tv all day people lining the the train track saying goodbye to bobby crying and waving their white handkerchiefs and getting back to uh, when he got shot in the kitchen or the pantry this uh this previous fellow that worked there named juan romero he had already shook in his hand when he was walking through to make his victory speech well when he got shot and he fell down juan romero was standing right there and he cradled him in his lap and what are the odds that he had a, uh, a rosary in his pocket and what with bobby being a hardcore catholic he gave him the rosary and they said uh, i think the hail mary and the our father and then he asked if everything was okay and then juan romero said yeah everything's okay and then uh he said uh good 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 i hope everything is okay so and then the very last words that he said was when they uh, came to pick him up the ambulance uh two persons he said don't lift me and then he was out that was it he never spoke again okay he uh he went into surgery at uh, good samaritan i'm gonna take you uh i guess uh fans of historical uh events of the 20th century popular culture i'm gonna take you to where they took him to the central receiving hospital a couple of blocks away where they didn't have an x-ray machine and they didn't have uh plasma can you believe that even though good samaritan emergency room was about a thousand feet so i'm going to take you uh people who are watching this i'm going to take you to show you how close it was and i guess i've listened to too much to clyde lewis and uh coast to coast to uh tonight not think that it wasn't a uh, conspiracy especially those weird events where the bullet entered his right ear and the supposed killer was to his front and his left He was only 42, and uh, this this country was falling apart, man. I mean, it was civil war, more polarization than you think now. It was nothing. There was a war on. Five, six hundred young men a, a month getting killed in Vietnam. The average age 20. And uh, he had actually he had already done a speech the day that uh, Martin Luther King was shot, April 4th. And I want to quote him here, what he said to that crowd. They were incredulous. That was the first time that they had heard that uh, Reverend Emma Martin Luther King had been killed. What we need in the United States is not hatred. What we need in the United States is not violence or lawlessness, but love and wisdom and compassion toward one another and a feeling of justice towards those who still suffer within our country whether they be white or whether they be black and then uh lo and behold two months later he was shot down by somebody hating him we'll never forget you bobby and ironically the last film ever made here was bobby Emilio Estevez directed that great film in 2006. That was with Debbie Moore. And then that thing you lit, you do with Liv Tyler in 1996. That Tom Hanks great directed movie. And uh, Bobby, he had seven sons and four daughters when he died here. He actually died uh, June the 6th at 1.44 a.m. He was pronounced dead. So he lived uh, 25, about 25 hours in a coma, of course. And they said if he would have lived, he would have been brain dead anywhere, a complete vegetable. So, one of the saddest days, everybody crying. And uh, a lot of people here now, they walk by and they're not even aware of what happened here. History changed in this spot that night. God only knows where this country would have been headed. The Hispanics loved him, the blacks. Very liberal, of course, they call him very liberal. But as Attorney General, he demanded that every area of government begin recruiting 
realistic levels of blacks and Hispanics because at that time if you were alive if you had no skills they'd hire the white guy over the Hispanic or black so they had a they had to institute laws people call them quotas but that's not what they were people couldn't get jobs because of the color of their skin so if you, if you if people don't want to do it voluntarily they got to pass laws so I'm not gonna wax political here I'm just gonna say I'm just saying what he what he wanted and what he thought was right okay Bobby wherever you're at good night sweet Prince